Do you know what Kylie Jenner, Kim Kardashian, and Ariana Grande have in common? You may have guessed it. They are all influencers. But they're certainly not the first people to become influencers. In this video, we'll talk about one of the biggest influencers of the 20th century, Oprah Winfrey. Before we get into the story, I want to welcome you to Business Successful, where it's all about successful founders and businesses. Oprah Winfrey was born on January 29th of 1954 in Mississippi, with her teen parents separating almost immediately after she was born. They left Oprah in the care of her grandmother, where she lived on a farm and in extreme poverty until the age of six, when her grandmother became ill and she was sent to Milwaukee to live with her mother and two half-brothers in a ghetto. Her mother worked long hours and trusted her family to take good care of the children. Unfortunately, her family wasn't as trustworthy as she thought, as Oprah was raped multiple times by her mother's cousin's boyfriend. At the age of 14, Oprah's mother finally sent her to Nashville to live with her father and his new life. Oprah has said that her father saved her life. He was very strict and provided her with structure, rules, and books. He required his daughter to complete weekly book reports, and she went without dinner until she learned five new vocabulary words each day. Winfrey became an excellent student, participating in the drama club, debate club, and student council. And she received a full scholarship to Tennessee State University after she won a speaking contest. The Beginning of Her Career Oprah became Miss Black Nashville and Miss Tennessee during her freshman year at Tennessee State. Recognizing her potential, the Nashville Columbia Broadcasting System, known as CBS, offered her a job but she turned down twice. Before she finally took the advice of one of her teachers who reminded her that job offers from CBS were the reason people go to college. Oprah became Nashville's youngest and first African-American female co-anchor of the evening news. She was 19 years old and still a sophomore in college. In 1984, Oprah made a big decision. She moved to Chicago, where she would host a morning talk show, which was last in terms of viewership. She decided to change the emphasis of the show from traditional women's issues to more controversial topics. The audience liked it, and after one month, Oprah's morning show went from the worst to the best-watched morning show. In 1985, the show was renamed to The Oprah Winfrey Show, and she played a role in The Color Purple, a film directed by Steven Spielberg. Her acting in this role got her nominated for an Oscar in the category Best Supporting Actress but she lost to Angelica Houston. In 1986, Oprah, encouraged by film critic Roger Ebert, went nationwide with The Oprah Winfrey Show. She also founded her own production company, which would later buy the rights to distribute The Oprah Winfrey Show. She called the company Harpo, which is her name spelled backwards, and also the name of her on-screen husband in the color purple. In September 1996, Oprah started an on-air reading club. In an episode, she stood up and announced she wanted to get the country reading, telling her fans to rush to the stores to buy The Deep End of the Ocean by Jacqueline Mitchard. They would then discuss it together on the air the following month. Before Oprah announced her pick, The Deep End of the Ocean had 100,000 sales. Two weeks after announcing her pick, 640,000 copies of the book were sold, demonstrating Oprah's influence. Controversy. Although Oprah has millions of fans, not everyone has had kind words for her or her show. In 1994, a former employee quit Harpo Incorporated and sued the company for back pay. She claimed she left Harpo because of the environment of dishonesty and chaos. Oprah settled the suit out of court two years later, and nowadays, everyone who works for Oprah has to sign a statement promising to never speak publicly about Oprah or her companies. In 1998, Oprah was involved in a very public court case in an episode in 1996, which examined how cattle are raised and the possibilities of getting mad cow disease from tainted beef, Winfrey said she would never eat another hamburger. Soon after the episode aired, prices for cattle began to fall, and several Texas cattle ranchers sued her based on a Texas law, which basically makes it illegal for people to make false claims about food produced in the state of Texas. Some people noted that cattle prices were already falling before Winfrey's comment, but the case went to trial anyway in Amarillo, Texas in January 1998. 
Instead of avoiding publicity over the lawsuit, Winfrey moved her show to Amarillo for the length of the trial. On her shows there, she praised Texas culture and won the support of the local citizens. In court, she defended the fact that she and her guests had the right to speak their minds. According to Texas Monthly, Oprah testified that she provides a forum for people to express their opinions. Finishing with, we are allowed to do this in the United States of America. Oprah won the case. Her own magazine. In the year 2000, Oprah started her own magazine called O. Her fans loved it. The magazine became a huge success. In December of 2020, the magazine published its last printed version as they switched completely to the internet, where they get around 8 million unique views every month. Oprah appeared on the cover of every edition because she didn't want to be dependent on other celebrities to sell an edition. There were two shared covers, in April of 2009 when she appeared together with Michelle Obama and in December of 2009 when she appeared on the cover together with Ellen DeGeneres. The September 2020 edition was the first and only time Oprah wasn't on the cover. The cover featured the late Breonna Taylor, a young woman who was killed by the police in Louisville, Kentucky. The end of the Oprah Winfrey show and the beginning of OWN. In November of 2009, Oprah announced that her show would end in 2011 after 25 seasons, saying, Here's the real reason. I love this show. This show is my life. I love it enough to know when it's time to say goodbye. It's the perfect number, the exact right time. While 2011 was the ending of something major for Oprah, it was also the start of something new, OWN, the Oprah Winfrey Network, a network which replaced the Discovery Health Channel. It started as a 50-50 joint venture with Discovery, but by now Oprah has sold most of the shares back to Discovery, owning only about 5% today. However, this doesn't mean she's not involved in it anymore. She is still the CEO and Chief Creative Officer of the network. President Oprah In 2018, it looked like Oprah was going to run for president. With Donald Trump daring her by tweeting, just watched a very insecure Oprah Winfrey, who at one point I knew very well, interview a panel of people on 60 Minutes. The questions were biased and slanted. The facts incorrect. Hope Oprah runs so she can be exposed and defeated just like all of the others. Not long after the tweet, she gave an inspirational Golden Globe speech, which left her fans convinced she would run for office in 2020. But she shot the hopes down not long after the speech, saying, I prayed and asked God for a sign. It's just not for me. So it's also unlikely that we will see Oprah running in 2024. Oprah Winfrey, who is the richest African-American of the 20th century, went from a kid with a very difficult childhood to one of the most influential people worldwide who can afford to pay for $52 million for her dream house in Montecito. This was her rags to riches story. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and let us know what the topic of our next video should be.